welcome back to another video of H&H &H Express Model and Scale Trains. Today I'm going to show you how I expand the analog inputs on my power station. In the video adding power to the shadow station, I added only four analog inputs to the power section with an additional Arduino. Let's say I need to have 16, well the Arduino Nano only has a maximum of six which we can use because two of them are being used by the I2C bus. So I'm going to show you how I can add the additional analog inputs using a multiplexer. So let's go over the computer and I will show you how I connected it. So here is a schematic. You see four tracks. So four power sections and I'm going to use an Arduino Nano. Next to that I'm going to use a multiplexer and to each power section there will be a current sensor connected and these are connected to the following power sections. That will be staging yard 01, 02, 03 and so on and the last one will be train yard 06. So we're going to connect up the ground I didn't put it in the schematic, but the current sensors for 2 and 3 are also connected to ground. I'm going to connect all devices to the 5 volt. To be able to use the multiplexer and to select the channel, I need to have 4 outputs on the Arduino Nano. And I'm going to use pins 4, 5, 6 and 7. And they are connected to S0. S1, S2 and S3 on the multiplexer. Next we will connect all the current sensors up to the analog inputs and those are C0, C1, C2 and the last one I'm gonna connect to C15 and the S 10 signal, that is the output signal of the multiplexer, will be connected to pin number 6 on the Arduino Nano itself. And that is the pin where we receive all the data for. So the way the multiplexer works to get the input signals of C0 up to C15 is you need to set the inputs S0, S1, S2, S3 high so that it reflects one of the 16 inputs. And I will show you the table on how that is done shortly. So if I would like to check on C0 input, all the S0, 1, 2 and 3 inputs need to be low. If I'm going to check on C1, then S0 needs to be high and the rest needs to be low. If I'm going to check on C2, then S1 needs to be high and the rest needs to be low. If I'm going to check the C15 input, then all pins, so S0, S1, S2, S3 need to be high. And that is done on the Arduino and then you can get all the information via the analog pin 6 from the Arduino Nano. So here on the right you see the whole table in which you see the signals low and high. So S0, S1, S2 and S3 are the control signals of the multiplexer. And then the pin to read is C0 up to C15. So and at the bottom left of the schematic, you see that for example for power section train yard 06, all pins S0 to S3 on the multiplexer need to be high to be able to read common signal 15 on the analog pin A6. And if you want to read power section staging yard 03, which is connected to C2 of the multiplexer, then S0 needs to be low, S1 needs to be high, S2 needs to be low, and S3 needs to be low. And I will demonstrate that 
in the next section. So at the top of the screen, you see the Arduino, you see the multiplexer, and I connected three sensors to it. This is a infrared sensor, this is an infrared sensor, and this is a hull sensor. And the hull sensor responds on magnetic field. And you can see that the light is now off and the light is now back on. So at the bottom left, you see the output of all the 16 ports and you see, for example, that port number 15 on the MUX is now reporting 1021. Well, actually what I did is I used a jumper wire to connect it to the five volt. And if I'm gonna remove this, I'm gonna put it to ground. You will see that it changed to the value zero. So I'm gonna leave it that way. The other ones I cleared out so that you can see the difference on the other ports zero, one, and two. So the program is as follows. I defined the outputs on the Arduino with MUX S0, S1, S2, S3. And as mentioned, they are connected to pin four, five, six, and seven. The analog input is A6 because we're gonna read from it. I always use an application version, so that is what I do and I print it on the screen. So first what you need to do is you need to set the pin mode. Since the pin mode for the multiplexer will be an output, because you need to select which pin it is, I set the multiplex as 0, 1, 2, and 3 as an output pin. And I write the signal low to it, so it immediately detects the output of C0, which is the top one in the list on the left. In the loop, I use a long for the analog value. I set it to zero and I'm gonna print on the screen reading values of multiplex port. Then I'm gonna count from zero to 15. So I do a multiplex port select that's a function which I wrote so that I can select the ports, otherwise this loop would be a little bit too big. Uh, we will come into that uh, section further on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the analog value of pin A6, which is now connected to that port, and I'm going to print out the port number, and I'm going to print out the value, and I'm only going to do that for the values 0, 1, 2, and 15. I'm going to wait 25 milliseconds to read all the sensors and then wait 1500 milliseconds, which is one and a half second to update the screen. Here in this um, section, this is the function MUX port select. I fill in the value which I want to read. So I select the port, which is select underscore port. And since I have 15 options, zero to 15, I'm gonna set the multiplex values to it. So for zero, all the ports need to be zero. So S0 is low, S1 is low, S2 is low and S3 is low. So we also saw that in the previous section of this video where I showed you the matrix. Well, this is the matrix, but then for the Arduino. So on 15, every uh, S0, S1, S2 and S3 need to be high. As you can see here, they are all set to high. So that is what this function does. It makes sure that the right port is selected at the right time. 
So and that's the simplest program to check on all the ports. So now let's check the ports and test it. So we have port number one, that is an infrared sensor. The closer you get, the lower the value. So let me do this so that the other value is not blocked. So you can see it is now set to 33, 34, it fluctuates a bit. If I'm gonna remove my finger, it goes back up to 1020 in that range. The same with the other sensor, it's 31 when I block it. And if I'm gonna leave it, it's 1019. And with the uh, hull sensor, if I'm gonna push the uh, magnet closer, you see that it changes value. The further I get away, the higher the value gets. So now you can see that the multiplexer functions correctly. So that is it for this video. I hope you liked it, so please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of these videos, please consider to subscribe to my channel. I will see you in the next video. Thank you and goodbye.